Good morning all. Let's start this day with a Bible verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have an everlasting life. John 3:16. Warm greetings to one and all. Wishing you all the best for the day ahead. I am Henry Joseph, first MSc Computer Science, Anna Violet Arts and Science College, signing you in for the live webinar, Orientation on Civil Services and Competitive Examination, organized by IQAC and Department of Mathematics. Never forget the three powerful resources you always have available for you, love, prayer, and forgiveness. Now I invite our college choir to begin this session with the blessing of almighty through the prayer song Thank you, choir, for the melodious prayer song. A smile is a universal welcome. On behalf of IQAC and your Department of Mathematics, it's my great pleasure to welcome you all for the today's live webinar. I welcome our chairman, Shavale Dr. N. R. Dhanabalan Sir, our secretary, Mr. N. R. D. Prem Kumar Sir, our joint secretary, Dr. P. E. R. Prem Chand Sir and our beloved principal ma'am, Dr. Kamala Balakrishnan ma'am, and our vice principal, Mr. Jaffia Solomon ma'am, for this event. I also welcome our department heads, faculties, students, and virtual participants who are joining us from other colleges and schools. Once again, I welcome you all. Participants can post your questions in the chat box, which will be dealt in the end of this session. Without mathematics, there's nothing you can do. Everything around you is mathematics. Everything around you is numbers. Now I call upon Mr. D. Mogunamalli, ma'am, head of the department, Department of Mathematics, Anna Violet Arts and Science College, to give a brief introduction about our chief guest and introduce him to the session. Good morning to one and all present here. On this occasion, I would like to introduce the chief case for our session, Dr. A.S. Santakumar, Assistant Professor, Department of Mathematics, St. Thomas College of Arts and Science, Chennai. He has completed his UG, PG, and MPhil from Lilo College. He is recipient of doctoral degree from Lilo College on the topic graph theory. His academic achievements were Dr. R. Bharati Award for the proficiency in first, second, and third semesters in MSc Mathematics and Graph Theory, Sri V. Bhaskara Charyulu Prize Gold Medal and Krishna Swami Memorial Medal for securing first rank in MSc Mathematics. He was a resource person in the webinar on certain applications of Graph Theory, St. Thomas College of Arts and Science, Chennai, two-day online national seminar on recent research topics in mathematics, Adslim College, Bellu, Research talk on getting started with research, Human Christian College, Chennai. He has participated more than eight online programs, workshops, and conferences. 
He has presented papers such as partition dimension of certain class of rooted product of graphs in National Conference on Mathematics and Computer Application, Women's Christian College, partition dimension of series, composition of Peterson graph in International Conference on Computing Sciences, Lyola College, partition dimension of Pramit Network in International Conference on Mathematics, University of Kerala, Trivandrum, partition dimension of certain honeycomb derived networks in International Conference on Science, Technology, Engineering and Management, JPR Engineering College, on certain graphs with partition dimension 4 in International Workshop on Parallel Computing, VAT University, Chennai Campus, partition dimension of complete binary tree derived architectures in International Conference, Lila College, energy of certain chemical graphs in International Conference on Mathematical and Natural Sciences, Women's Christian College, energy of gear graph in National Symposium on Mathematical Methods and Application, IIT Madras, partition dimension of theta and series parallel graph in International Conference on Mathematical Engineering, VAT University, Chennai Campus, energy of graphs with pendant edges in National Symposium on Mathematics and Computer Application, Women's Christian College. He has published papers namely, Discrete Applied Mathematics and Theoretical Computer Science in 2019, Mathematical Science International Research Journal in 2018, International Journal of Computational and Applied Mathematics in 2017, International Journal of Pure and Applied Mathematics in 2016, Mathematical Sciences International Research Journal in 2015, International Journal of Computing Algorithm in 2014, International Journal of Business Intelligence in 2013. Currently, he is the Assistant Professor of Depart Department of Mathematics, St. Thomas College of Arts and Science, and faculty in Satik IAS Academy. So, with this brief introduction, once again, I welcome Dr. S. Sardukumar, sir, for this session. Thank you, sir. Now the session is yours. Thank you, madam. Good morning, one and all. Once again, I welcome you all for this webinar on orientation on civil services and competitive examinations, which is organized by IQAC and the Department of Mathematics. First of all, uh, I like to thank the management of the Annai Violet Arts and Science College, that is chairman, respected chairman, respected secretary, respected joint secretary, uh, respected principal ma'am, and the vice principal ma'am, and uh, the organizers of this event, especially uh, head of the Department of Mathematics, uh, respected Morgan Valley ma'am, and all other staff members and the students. Welcome and thank you all for giving me this opportunity to talk about uh, the civil services examination and three other competitive examination. And first of all, I like to congratulate uh, the organizing team for coming up with such initiative. This is really a good initiative which is going to benefit the student community. So 100%, I'm sure that a few of your students might get motivated to pursue uh, their service, civil services team. So let me begin uh, the topic. Before that, you can share the screen. Okay, let me start with the Gandhiji's quote be the change that you wish to see in the world. First, I like to give some motivation by introducing uh, three people who are uh, the civil servants of India, who are being the part of change in this world. The first person is Beno Zafeng. See, these people I'm introducing because we need certain motivation and inspiration. For that reason, I'm introducing, just uh, saying uh, about these people, not elaborately, just uh, 
in a just just i'm going to beno zafai currently she is an ifs officer indian foreign service officer and she is uh, 100% visually challenged girl but she made a history by clearing this civil services examination and this is the first time in the administrative history uh, who is under person usually challenged again uh, clearing this exam and getting the service and uh, you would have imagined how much she would have gone through see the people used to say this is the toughest exam yes of course it is the first and uh, what are the preparation strategies should have used she could not see there are so many materials to read for this exam she could not read her own but she made it to this site because so many people helped her especially their parents used to read for her hours and hours and uh, whatever the limited sources available to her she made use of all the resources and uh, now she is working in ifs indian forest foreign service that to in embassy in paris this is one of the inspiring story the next person is mr sivaguru prabhakar ias and uh, you see uh, again he is uh, from a very economically backward uh, family uh, he is from tanjavur district uh, in a village and uh, see after uh, uh, passing 12th standard he actually wanted to pursue uh, engineering but he could not do because of uh, economical uh, poor economical background and uh, he just uh, joined in a mill and uh, also he uh, worked in farming and earned money half of the money he spent for his family half of the money he saved for his ias studies and later he joined engineering and while while studying while pursuing engineering he also uh, prepared for iit exams and after completing the bachelor in engineering he, he joined mtech in iit madras so after uh, joining he started preparing for uh, various competitive exam and also he cleared uh, in, uh, engineering service also and you surprised to know in the weekdays he used to when he was preparing for the exam he used to stay in the railway station so he did a lot of hard work afterwards he started to prepare for this ias exam i mean civil service exam the first uh, 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 few exam he couldn't succeed afterwards he succeeded but he got lower rank afterwards he got all india rank 101 now he is uh, Uh, working as assistant collector in some i think protocol i guess so so see that from where how many how many uh, efforts he made now he is what the civil servant of india and another inspiring story is from uh, a manikandan ias see many of you would have you know uh, uh, would have the doubt whether uh, if he study in tamil medium will like be able to clear this exam yes he is an example see whatever he studied in schooling he studied in tamil medium again he is also from economically uh, backward uh, family from kadalu district he is from one of the village he, he studied uh, full schooling in tamil medium so afterwards he uh, pursued a uh, uh, pharmacy and finally he, he, he made almost six attempts to clear this exam in the sixth attempt only he got the rank what he required right now he is working as a uh, sub collector in uh, varanasi uh, up uh, this is another inspirational story why i have introduced these three people see here whatever the difficulty you have we can get through this exam whatever the background you are we can get get through this exam whatever the medium you study we can get through this exam so these are the living examples for us okay these are the three 
living example civil servants of india and you are talking about civil service of what is who is civil servant if you ask me civil servants are employees of government of india or of uh, state governments they are coming under permanent executive branch of republic of india that means there are three branches of government one is legislative branch executive branch judicial branch in legislative they make laws in executive they implement the laws in judicial they evaluate the laws right so in the executive part only the civil servants comes sir i don't understand what is this executive you are saying implementing executive can you explain with an example yes definitely see here at present we you know vaccine distribution system if uh, we are in a pandemic all are requested to put vaccine so vaccine need to be distributed to the citizens of, and citizens of india so it is what responsibility of the government what the government does here it gets vaccine from the manufacturer the vaccine comes to national vaccine store it is responsible the responsible goes to the ministry of health and family welfare right and uh, in that ministry the minister will be there under him there will be many ias officer like the secretary and secretary they are all what the executive officers according to the needs of the various states whatever the vaccine they have they distribute that vaccine to the state vaccine centers they send it to states in the state again state health ministry will be there under the ministry state health secretary all those ias officers will be there it is their prime responsibility to distribute those vaccines to the district in the district there will be what uh, various demand for the vaccine each district will not have the same demand it, it is depending on the spreading of the disease so according to the need they will give the vaccine to the district vaccine centers and then the district then they will what send it to different talks from different talks to what the hospital from the hospital to the uh, people see in this see here vaccine is what now the prime most important one it has to be distributed so the distribution is what implementing the uh, vaccination policy now that the policy is implemented through what the executive branch officers so in the civil service if we get a service we are going to work in this kind of executive implementation proper right this is what executive i mean then such civil service we are saying civil servant we have explained who is that is there any exam is there any exam in conducting body yes there is a exam to become civil servants okay whenever i say civil servants see here i mean uh, ias ifs ips those services only if you want to become if you want to get those services you have to write a exam conducted by union public service commission they are the conduct, conducting agency of this exam for uh, various services and the few details about the services so it is the all india level service it is national level uh, exam it is not state level it is not a district level it is national level almost every year uh, more than 4 lakh people are participating in the exam so as i told earlier it is conducted by union public service commission exam mode is offline only pen and paper mode it is not online mode so pen and paper mode it is not online mode not yet it has been conducted in online it is offline mode only and uh, the age limit is 21 to 32 years if you are 21 years you are eligible to write the exam till 32 years for general category there are some relax relaxation to uh, other category people like obc scst candidate there are some relaxation this relaxation i will explain a little bit later so generally when you are becoming 21 can write the exam till 32 years number of attempts for general category people six attempts six times you can write you cannot uh, write how many time how much ever you want you cannot write so only six times you can write the exam 
So education qualification, you need a graduation. You need just a degree. Recognized degree, you need just, that is enough. So it is not necessarily a particular degree. It can be BSc, it can be BA, it can be BCom, any degree it can be. So one degree and you should be what, 21 years old, that's it. That is the prime most requirement for this examination. And of course, you should be citizen of India. This is what basic requirements to write this examination. And as I told, yeah, you should have a degree from a recognized university. And some people, suppose if you are uh, studying uh, PG, you have attained 21 years, yes, you can apply and write. Some people might have started your undergraduation a little bit later. So when you complete your undergraduation, you might be 22 or 23. Can I write? Can I write? Can I apply for the exam when I'm, when I'm studying in the final year? Yes, you can apply because once you complete the course, so it will be uh, more than 21 or about 21. So you are eligible to write the exam or you are eligible to apply for the exam when you are studying the final year in undergraduation. And also for the PG students, definitely you can uh, apply and write. But before writing the main examination, we have to produce the completion, course completion certificate. As I, as I said earlier, there is some age limit, uh, upper age limit for certain categories. See, uh, general category people, six times they can write the exam. OBC category people, six plus three, nine times they can write. Up to the age of 35 years. So till 35 years, you can write. How many times you can write? Nine times you can write, starting from 21 years of age. Similarly, SCST candidate people, till 37 years, you can, I mean, 37, age 37, you can write. So from 21 to 37, you can write. There is no uh, limit for attempt. You can write from 21 to 37. Here, attempt is unlimited. Next serviceman. Up to the age limit of 37, you can apply nine times. Nine times you can uh, write the exam. And other wish, uh, uh, differently able people, you can write the exam till 42, uh, age of 42, and nine times you can write. So for general category people, only six times. From 21 to 32 years, you can write only six times. For others, there are some relaxation in the uh, upper age limit and the number of attempts. Okay, now coming to the exam. Those are the basic qualities to write the exam or basic requirements to write there. And there is nothing quality, there is requirements to write the exam. Okay, what is the exam pattern? So the exam pattern, this civil service exam is conducted in three stages. Stage one is called preliminary exam. Stage two is called main exam. Stage three is personality test or interview. The preliminary exam is of objective to a object, objective type exam. That means multiple choice questions. I'll explain this uh, exam detail, uh, elaborate a little bit later. In the main exam written type, that means descriptive type, we have to write the answers, like how you write your semester exam. The same way you have to write descriptive type test. Interview, of course, uh, personality test, they call it. So why they kept these stages? It is just to filter almost, I, as I said earlier, more than four lakh people are writing all over. See, so it is approximately. And uh, they uh, need what? The requirement for every year is close to 1,000 people only. From four lakh, they are going to select only 1,000 people. They have to filter. They want the best candidate. In order to filter, to choose the best candidate, they go stage by stage. Preliminary exam, they eliminate few people. They select only the meritorious people. In the main exam, again, uh, uh, choose the correct one. They'll go for the interview. Then finally, uh, the result will come. So there are three stages. I'll explain what are these exams, one by what is the syllabus, uh, what has to be studied. Those things I'll explain one by one. Now, general time framework. 
see it is not the exam once it is not one day exam or two day exam if i if you write the exam today tomorrow you are not going to become serious so it is a one year exam what i mean one year exam see here the union public service commission will give the notification in the month of february right once you get the notification you will apply for the exam the exam usually will be in the month of june the june they will keep the exam but at present due to the pandemic they have postponed the exam to the october it's supposed to be held in the uh, in this month on 27th but now it has been postponed to 10th october these are some unavoidable circumstances usually it will happen in the june preliminary exam once you clear the preliminary exam you will be writing the mains exam the month of september and october or october right so once you clear the mains exam only you will be called for interview that will be in the month of february or march once the interview is over the final result will be announced in the month of april and may you see here the notification comes in the february suppose 2021 february it comes means the result is going to be on 2022 april and may almost what it is a one year process and the most importantly suppose if you don't clear the pre exam again you have to write next year only next year february, february only notification will come for the next year only you have to start the preliminary suppose clearing the preliminary you are going for the mains exam the mains exam you are not clearing means again you have to start from the beginning again come to the prelims again means you are going to the interview so if you are not clearing it you again start from the exam so it is not that once you clear prelims always next time you are going to write mains exam no again you have to start from the scratch so it is what one year process so it is not one day or two day process so it is one year process and now coming to the preliminary exam the preliminary exam right consists of two parts or two papers general studies paper 1 general studies paper 2 are usually called as csat civil services aptitude test first let me explain this uh, uh, paper 2 paper 2 See, there are two papers as I said. Each paper is for two hundred marks. You are going to write every paper two paper for two hundred marks. And you, the paper two is qualifying in nature, qualifying paper. That means if you get pass mark, that is enough. That means you have to get thirty three percentage of this two hundred. That means almost to sixty six. R plus one will take sixty-seven marks. It is enough. If we get through this, if R, if we get sixty-seven marks out of two hundred, you are eligible. You will be evaluated at the second paper. I mean, paper one. This is what they'll consider for whether you go for the mains or not. This two hundred mark you are going to write. and as i said earlier it is objective type question that means what multiple choice answers multiple choice question and in this see that paper 2 look at the syllabus basic thing 10th level syllabus only it is not very difficult to work comprehension in that there are only two parts english and mathematics basic mathematics basic english comprehension right they will give a paragraph uh based on the paragraph they will give few questions you have to understand the paragraph to answer the question and then interpersonal skills including communication skill logical reasoning and analytical ability decision making and problem solving general mental ability basic numeracy data interpretation these are all what uh, we'll say aptitude part or mental ability part max part okay so you are not going to study here any difficult thing i'll give that example how the questions are going to be The, this paper paper 2 is easy and just you need to what just to score 32 percentage of out of 200 once you get pass mark you will be what evaluated in second paper look at the second paper syllabus 
current events that is why whenever you say that uh, you are preparing for civil service uh, the people ask are you reading the newspaper regularly what for just to know the current events what is happening around in order to know that we have to read daily newspaper there are uh, other magazines as well so you should know the current events and you should know the history history means here uh, ancient medieval modern history and then geography india and world geography polity economy environment and science and technology science just uh, given the major topics all of there are sub topics so you have to study these things you have to study these subjects and you are going to write the exam for 200 marks and in this 200 marks if you get almost 100 to 120 marks this enough you will be going to the next stage you are not required to score 200 out of 200 or 190 out of 200 no you cannot score first of all because the questions are going to be that much tough and also there is negative mark in this part right one third see each question here in the paper one there are going to be 100 question in the paper 2 there are going to be 80 question in the paper 1 each question carries two marks in the paper 2 each question carries 2.5 marks right 2 into 100 200 marks you are going to write 2.5 to 80 you are going to write for 200 marks and there is one to test the test is that if you answer any question wrongly you will be reduced to one third of the mark that means if you answer one question wrongly here one third one third means almost 0.66 marks will be reduced and again here if you answer any thing any question wrongly you will be reduced to one third again one third it comes almost 8.3 Sorry, 0.83, 0.83 for each wrong question. Here, 0.66, 0.6 for each wrong. Question. That is why the preliminary exam seems to be a little bit difficult because of negative marks and objective type question. Here, if you want to answer each, if you want to answer the each question, you have to be uh, thorough in concepts. uh now the questions are asking based on the conceptual basis not the fact basis right i'll give an example for this how the questions are going to be we'll take few example see the question a parliament a parliamentary system of government is one which there are four options right all See here, the question is on parliamentary system, right? Uh, there are two kinds of system: parliamentary system of government and the presidential uh, system of government. You should know the difference between both. After knowing that, look at the uh, statements what we have given. You have to validate which statement is correct, which statement is wrong. If you validate the statements, you can answer the question. Uh, option A: All political parties in the parliament are represented in the government. The government is responsible to the parliament and can be removed by it. The government is elected by the people and can be removed by them. It is not so here. If it is so, then uh, no government will survive for five years. So look at the uh, fourth option: The government is chosen by the parliament but can not be removed by it. Before completion of fixed term, look at option B and look at option C. Here, it can, they are saying it can be removed. Yet they are saying it cannot be removed. But option is what? Option B is the correct answer out of this. Uh, four option. Option B is the correct answer. So, if you want to answer this kind of question, oh, yeah. the clarity of the parliamentary system of government, right? This is one example. Another example. Is this one no. reference to India's desert national park? Which of the following statements are correct? Just I'm giving you an idea how the questions are going to be in preliminary exam. I'm not going to discuss elaborately. This is how the questions are going to be. See, they have given three statements. 
they are asking out of these three test statements which one is correct right uh, the question is about india's desert national park it says the first statement it is spread over two district the desert national park is spread over two district i don't know there is no human habitation inside the park again you have to validate whether it is there is human habitation or not it is one of the natural habitats of great indian bustard so you should know where it is located and uh, whether these statements are right yes the third statement is general knowledge in the uh, desert national park great indian bustards are usually uh, uh, there and uh, see second statement is wrong uh, there is no human habitation inside the park is wrong statement because human habitations are allowed it is spread over two district yes it is spread over two districts of uh, rajasthan so desert national park is in rajasthan it spread over they salmar and padna uh, so if you validate these statements like this then which one is correct they have given four options right in the four option which two statements are correct one and correct what is one and three option c is the correct answer like that you have to validate the statement and you have to answer it if you want to validate the statement you should be what thorough in each and every concept so this is how questions are going to be and as i said in the paper too the max questions see a simple question we have given sequence of numbers the question is what how many the question is how many odd numbers are followed by odd numbers in the above sequence see here the number odd number followed by odd number see here five is an odd number followed is what one one is also odd number seven is an odd number followed by three three is also odd number Three is followed by nine. Nine is odd number. Five is an odd number followed by seven. Seven is an odd number. Three again followed by one. One is an odd number. Again, one is followed by five. Five is an odd number. Now, how many odd numbers are followed by odd numbers? So here we have to understand the question bit, and then you have to answer. So how many odd numbers? Five, seven, three, and one. See this five, seven, and of course three, seven. And three one. There are six odd numbers followed by odd numbers. The answer is six. Option is B. So like this, the going the questions are going to be repeated. And one more example with that we wind up this question. See here I have given two statements. All numbers are uh, divisible by two. All numbers are divisible by three. See it is based on your just understanding only. You should know basic uh, number system. Two, based on these two statements, two conclusions are arised. What are the two conclusions? All numbers are divisible by six. All numbers are divisible by four. Which conclusion is? What is the question? Which of the above conclusion logically follows from the two given statements? What is the correct statements? See, only conclusion one is correct, or only conclusion two? Uh, neither one nor two or both? We don't know. See here. Uh, the answer is. Very simple. If a number is divisible by two and three, it is divisible by six, uh, right? And if a number is divisible by two and three, it does not necessarily need to be divisible by four. Like for example, six. Six is divisible by two and three, but six is not divisible by four. So which is the correct one? The first conclusion is the correct one. So option A is the correct answer. So like this, we have to think and answer. This is how the questions are going to be in. Preliminary exam. So I think I have given just a few details about the preliminary exam. See uh, about preliminary exam, about main exam, about interview exam. I can talk about uh, more than one uh, one one and a half hour, but just I am giving oral idea. Now we will move on to the main exam pattern. How the main exam going to be? See preliminary exam. Just we are going to promote it to the next stage. they are using that exam to promote you to the next stage they are not going to consider the mark whatever you have scored in the preliminary exam but in the mains exam it is a descriptive exam you are going to write that means you are going to write paragraph those kind of answer writing uh, method you are going to use right in this exam only we are going to score marks that marks only we are going to consider for your rank now 
how many papers are there in the main section that is what we are going to see see there are <coughs> first paper essay one paper is there that is essay paper general studies paper there are four general studies paper four general studies paper general gs1 gs2 gs3 gs4 and two optional paper and two language paper compulsory paper see one paper is there english uh, based on english this is for 300 marks and the regional i mean another paper is what your uh, regional language paper tamil it can be malayalam it can be it can be Canada or hindi can be so whatever it is language paper another uh, paper if this is for 300 marks again these two papers are qualifying actually if you get the part mark that is enough these two papers are not considered for your ranking just it is a qualifying paper so only this two and these papers are considered for your ranking each paper you are going to write it for 250 marks 250 every paper here what 250 marks all three papers this is also for 250 you are going to write this is also you are going to write for 250 this is also you are going to write for 250 and there are two optional paper 250 i'll tell you what is an option paper and that so this is 250 right so essay paper see i'm not going uh, detail into the uh, uh, question paper pattern and that. one essay paper is there you are going to write two essays each for what one uh, 125 marks so 250 marks this is for essay paper general studies paper paper one paper two paper three paper four you see here i've given the syllabus what is that you are going to study in paper one art and culture a modern history and uh, post independence consolidation world history geography and the indian society for example in the world history what is that you are going to study there are so much so many uh, uh, revolutions french revolution uh, american revolution right those revolution you will study there are two major events in the world history that is world war one world war two after world war one world war two there is some concept called cold war so those things you will be studying what is the cause of the world war one what is the impact of world world war one similarly right those concepts you will study right this just this is just about world history like that you will be studying each subject elaborately in the paper two, the syllabus is what you are going to uh, study about polity and the constitution and about governance, social justice, international relation. So in the international relation part, you will be studying what uh, India's relation with the neighbors, uh, uh, Sri Lanka, uh, uh, Bangladesh, China, Pakistan, like that India's neighbors you are going to study, India's neighbors with the other countries, India's neighbors with the international organization, regional organization. Right. So you have to know the background and you have also know uh, you should know the uh, present app, the current happenings. Right. So ju just this is an example for international relation. What is that you are going to study? Similarly, in paper three, you'll be studying about the Indian economy, agriculture, uh, science and technology, internal security, and uh, environmental ecology. And uh, the paper four is about the ethics. This is ethics paper, ethics and integrity. Uh, see, uh, uh, this service, civil service requests certain amount of uh, discipline from the civil servants and you should be honesty, you should have good attitude, you should be having good behavior, those things you should have, right? To check those things, we have kept this paper, right? So we have to uh, write uh, general studies for, again, as I told, Every paper is for 250 marks. This essay paper and the general studies paper is common for all the people who are appearing for the NAITS examination. Whether you write the NAITS examination or I write or Mr. X or Mr. Y, whoever write this four general studies paper and the essay paper is common for everybody. Everybody going to write for this. But that is not the case with the optional paper. Optional paper, uh, I'll just explain. Okay, so I hope we yeah, have given uh, what is that you are going to write in the uh, mains exam. 
now let me give the example of question in the base exam this is a question based on environment without involving its indigenous community any conservation efforts to protect and to conserve the western gods is flawed analyze see there are different types of question here what when where questions are little bit less here the question types are going to be analyzed critically analyzed compare and contrast discuss and differentiate like that the questions are going to be of this pattern so first we have to understand what is the given question what is that you have to address in the question and what kind of question see you cannot adopt uh, uh, a single method for every kind of question analysis means you have to write answer differently and uh, critical analysis means you have to write the answer differently discuss means you have to write the answer differently explain means you have to write the answer differently like that you have to answer to the question not your own answer have you write in the uh, semester examination whatever the question they ask whatever you know you should not write what has been asked for that question you have to write the answer that is what here is important so maximum the structure is for we have to give an introduction it is not suitable for all there should be some content and conclusion and always you should have a opinion your opinion on each and every topic okay so this is what you have to do in the mains examination it is descriptive examination so these details let us uh, we have to focus okay next coming to the optional subject as i said optional subject is what is what going to be different for uh, different individual first of all these are the various optional subjects from agriculture agriculture to a to z agriculture to zoology right there are various type anthropology chemistry uh, commerce and accountancy economics geography history mathematics physics uh, uh, political science and international relation psychology sociology so there are various options along with literature optional subjects from a to u again from assam is to urdu and of course english uh canada tamil uh, malayalam right uh, bengali so all uh, literature papers are there you can choose any one paper it is your wish out of all these papers or all these subjects it is your wish you can choose any one subject so one subject you can choose on your own and see here there is no relation between whatever the graduation Uh, degree gap and what is that you are going to choose in the optional subject there is no relation if you have studied economics in your undergraduate no problem if you don't want to choose economics as your optional if you want to choose some other philosophy i am interested in philosophy means so you can choose a philosophy as a optional paper so if you have you would have studied physics in your undergraduate you may not uh, like uh, like to take that subject in your optional paper if you want to choose some other botany or anthropology or geography you can choose any subject as per your wish it is not necessary that whatever you studied in the graduation need to be chosen as your optional paper no whatever it can be in your uh, undergraduate subject no problem you can choose your option based on your interest because you are interested you are going to choose it right so these are the optional subject uh, again in the optional subject there are two papers you are going to uh, optional subject there are two papers paper 1 and paper 2 again each paper is for what 250 marks paper 1 paper 2 each paper we are going to write 250 marks already i have said what five papers essay gs1 gs2 gs3 gs4 for each paper 250 marks optional paper two papers again for what 250 marks totally how much it comes almost 1750 marks right one of the important uh, thing about optional subject is choosing the optional subject is what uh, very very crucial because as i told earlier those essay paper general studies paper for uh, is common for all the people but that is not the case for the case with the optional subject it is based on your interest it is you are going to choose the optional subject right just to score the marks little bit higher 
we are not going to do research here. If you are choosing mathematics, we are not going to do research in mathematics. We are choosing optional paper as a mathematics because just to score a little bit more. So what are the things you have to keep in mind while choosing optional paper? First, you should have an interest on this subject. And then if you are having some background, if you are having already studied, suppose uh, you, you are having very much interest on mathematics or physics or commerce, whatever. If you have already studied, yes, it is a good choice for you to choose as a optional. Or else also you can choose. These are what? Just uh, some interesting facts you have to know while choosing the optional subject. And uh, is there any overlap with the general studies? I, I have already told you GS1, GS2, GS3. In that history is there and geography is there. Right. If you choose your option as history and geography and all, so it, it, it is going to serve for both the purpose. It is going to help in general studies also and also what it is going to be helpful in option also. Like that. These are the various criteria you have to consider while choosing your option subject. And this is what going to differentiate from others. And this is one of the most important thing in the civil service exam, choosing an option subject. Because we have plenty of uh, uh, no options. They give one option and you have to do which you will do it if you if you place many options in front of you if you choose one option if you want to choose one option means there will be water uh, you, you your mind will tend to uh, choose many things uh, right so you have to be a little bit careful and you have to uh, consider various other factors also uh, while choosing the optional subjects here here i have given example of in the commerce and accountancy paper and in your college i think uh, all commerce courses are there uh, general uh, the tax management all those courses are available bba is also available so those who are studying in commerce and accountancy you can consider for choosing uh, commerce and accountancy as your optional paper see there are as i said two papers paper one paper two just have given the endings of the syllabus or elaborately i didn't give the syllabus endings of the syllabus alone in the paper one you will be studying about unit one financial accounting cost accounting taxation and auditing and similarly in paper two organizational theory organizational behavior human resource management and industry relation i think all the syllabus you would study in the ug itself right see uh here you are uh you are not going to uh, uh, as i said earlier you are, not, you are not going to do research here first of all and uh, you are going to understand the concept each and every concept you should be thorough with the concepts right and uh, the questions are going to be of medium category only it is not going to be very tough tough questions are a little bit uh, less right and it is not going to be easy also so your preparation should be always in a moderate level right this is what the optional subject this is what we are going to study for commerce and accountancy and uh, uh, mathematics students also, also uh, there is mathematics course in your college uh, mathematics students look at this paper one paper two syllabus and the paper one linear, linear algebra calculus analytical geometry ordinary differential equation dynamics and statistics vector analysis the paper two algebra real analysis complex analysis linear programming partial differential equation email analysis mechanics and fluid dynamics whatever the topics are or whatever the units are here uh, all the things you will study in your after graduation and also if you go for post graduation you will study the uh, little bit theory oriented of these topics right just you need some extra preparation you need some extra push for this exam that's it right so this is what the syllabus for max and similarly uh, i cannot uh, give all the uh, no, uh, syllabus of all these optional subject just i have given two example they each uh, Optional subject as its own syllabus. Just we have to prepare for the syllabus and we have to write it. And and a few more points we have to consider. The optional paper should be whatever the optional paper you are choosing. It should be what high scoring optional, right? You are not writing an exam to do research. You are just writing an exam to score good marks so that you get good ranks, so that you get good service. And that option should be easy optional. Okay. So, easy option in the sense that the syllabus should be a little bit uh, less uh, easy. The concepts are uh, easy to understand. Like that, you have to choose your optional certainty. If you choose that optional, 
that should be certainly in scoring marks right and uh, there are subjects dynamic subject like for example economics is a dynamic subject day by day it is what uh, changing and uh, uh, history uh, to some extent it is static subject if you choose the option subject from the static spot uh, it will be easy for it because it is not going to change right similarly max also static portion portions given there is no change in the portion you are not going to update day by day right so like that the option uh, subject should be of this category also and whatever the option subject you, you choose it should be a good facilitator for you to get uh, the good rank and the good service whatever you want right so it should play the role of facilitator role the option right so these are the points you have to consider while choosing the optional care plan now just i have given the same information here because in your college there are a course there is a course in chemistry so the people those who are studying chemistry you can consider your optional as chemistry it is not necessary that you have to consider only chemistry you can choose any other option also and commerce people commerce and accountancy economics people economics mathematics people mathematics physics people physics see there is one advantage of uh, choosing the optional whatever you studied in uh, uh, undergraduate is that see you know all the concepts just you are going to strengthen if you study any any subject which you have not studied already suppose you are from a, a chemistry background if you are choosing psychology you have to start the syllabus from the scratch from the beginning you have to start so it will take some time to understand the basic concept but you can get that relaxation here you know all the basic concept just you have to strengthen your concept that's it so i think these are the courses available in your college so people those who are studying these courses can look for this option subject and also literature people tamil and english people you can choose tamil and english and now look at let us look at few all india toppers and their option subject and how much marks they have scored uh, for the past 5 years i have taken in the 2015 uh, she is a uh, dean uh, the ias officer uh, her uh, option was political science and international relations see look at her marks out of 500 marks she has scored only 299 see 290 is is good mark in Uh, option paper see here you cannot score out of 500 you cannot score here 490 480 500 uh, 500 out of 500 499 it is not possible right uh, because the exams are that much difficult you can score good marks that good marks what i mean here is that scoring about uh, uh, 290 to 300 310 320 330 is considered to be very good mark in the option paper right in 2016 she is again kr nandini is officer she was a topper her optional paper is what a kannada literature she has scored out of 5 at 331 marks and in 2017 and the is uh, optional subject is anthropology she has scored uh, 318 marks in 2018 Kanishya Kataria uh, is the topper. He has scored 361 marks. His optional subject is what mathematics. And uh, in 2019, Pradeep Singh IAS, his optional subject is for public administration. He has scored 293 marks in the option out of 500. See here, uh, the optionals. See every year, the topper is from different different uh, optional subject. Okay, so. uh people used to say there are few uh, what to say favorite option subject but i don't think so right so it, uh, it is depend it, it depends on the individual who is preparing for the exam so his capability his ability to score good marks so it is your wish if you are having strong <coughs> conviction that you can score good marks if you are having strong knowledge in a particular subject then we can score good marks at the optional so no issue with the option so next stage after completing the mains examination you will be called for interview or they call as personality test what was this personality test to check who you are right so who, what you are and what personality you are right just to check whether are you having enough confidence to face 
any sort of difficulties any sort of uh, challenges are you honest person are you intelligent person uh, integrity person uh, are you able to understand the things uh, 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 properly speedily are you able to grasp the concept easily so those things they will evaluate in this personality test just it is not to know about who i mean where you are coming from or yourself no just we are going assess your personality whether you are eligible for such kind of services whether you will be able to uh, withstand with the pressure what you are going to have in the services whether you will be able to uh, give the service according to the demand of the society so those things they will analyze and they will test that is what personality test once the personality test is over so you will be uh, you will get a mark right as i told here you see here SA one, GS one, GS two, GS three, GS four, two hundred fifty marks. Optional paper one, paper two, two hundred fifty marks. Totally thousand seven hundred fifty marks. Interview, a personality test mark is for two hundred and seventy five marks. So totally two thousand, sorry, ah, two thousand twenty five marks total marks. Here you cannot. What do you think that how much mark we have to score out of two thousand twenty five marks? Out of two thousand two hundred twenty-five marks, two thousand marks you have to score. Thousand eight hundred marks you have to score. Thousand nine hundred marks you have to score. No, not at all. You cannot score that much marks and after. Okay, I'll give an example. How much marks you have to score? I'll take the topers uh, marks. I'll tell you uh, minimum. I mean, how much marks you can score maximum to get the top position? See here. Uh, I've said in two thousand sixteen, All India a topper is a Nandini. Look at her marks. Total marks. Look at her. Thousand hundred and twenty marks only total is scored. Right? See, paper wise, you see, yes, say out of two fifty, hundred and forty two. GS one, hundred and thirty one. GS two, one not three. GS three, hundred and sixty. GS four, one not four. See here, out of two fifty, if you get this much marks, that is enough. One not four hundred and sixty, and look at that. You can increase the mark only in your optional paper, right? In optional paper one, she has chosen Canada literature. Optional paper one thousand, sorry, hundred and sixty four, hundred and sixty seven, and interview she has scored a uh, hundred uh, and ninety three out of two seventy five. So total thousand hundred twenty. If they go this much mark, you will become one top. So more than thousand, uh, thousand, thousand fifty, thousand hundred, you will be top hundred uh, rank. And similarly, in two thousand eighteen, uh, Kanishka Katari is the topper. Look at his marks. Uh, SA hundred and thirty three. See general studies one ninety eight only he was able to score. Uh, in general studies two hundred and seventeen. General studies same mark. General studies four hundred and sixteen. See that max optional optional paper only. See she also increased the mark in our fraction paper. He also increased marks in that max optional paper. Under the seventy, under the twenty, right? So so wherever you scored less mark, it is what equalized by scoring the marks in the optional. So interview under the seventy nine you scored. So total marks how much you scored? Thousand under the twenty. He is the top. He was the top. In 2018, so out of 2,025 marks, you are able to score half of that mark, right? Half of that mark is enough, so that you will be what in top, okay, right? So 50 to 55 percentage mark if you score, this is enough. Okay, so till now I explained what are the exam pattern, right? What how the exam patterns are going to be. So next is what books has to be studied. So this is what uh, all India level uh, exam. So you have to start your preparation with the NCERT books from class six to class, except your uh, uh, language paper, English and uh, other language paper. You can only other subjects like uh, science. uh quality economic uh, those papers yeah, those subjects you have to study from 6 to 12 especially history 
6 to 12 standard, you have to study those subjects, NCRT books. This is what the basic first step, right? Why I'm asking you to do so? Because these books will give you a clear uh, basic understanding of each subject, uh, each subject and its concept clearly with the example they would have explained. So what about state subject books? Yes, you can study, no problem. But here one more important point is that few questions are directly coming from the book as it is. The NCRT, from the NCRT books, few questions are being asked directly, not every year, few years. So to understand the basic concept, first you have to start your preparation by studying the NCRT textbooks from 6 to 12 standard except the language factors. Then, after studying that, there are subject-wise specific books that you can right, read. See, these are not exact books, just it is a recommendation, right? So for polity, you can study Indian polity by Lakshmi Khans, right? This book is suitable for prelims, preliminary examination, right? To, to some extent for names examination, but it is not enough to write the main examination. Similarly, for, for economy, Indian economy by Ramesh sir, right? And uh, modern India, modern India spectrum, modern India, and uh, science and technology, Raviti uh, Agragari. Uh, These are subject by specific books you can study after completing what your NCRB textbooks, right? For similarly, for other subject, uh, various books are international relation and uh, society, internal security. For those uh, topics, we have different different books, right? First, you strengthen the basic by studying NCRT. Then you go to the particular book. Don't go to reverse. This is how we have to start our preparation, right? First, the NCRT. Then what? The particular subject-specific books, right? So you can do. Uh, you can start studying uh, the NCRT books on your own. And also you can study the uh, subject specific book also. But there is great role for coaching institutes, right? Because uh, it is not provocation for any post coaching institute. The coaching institutes are what integral part of your preparation because three important points here. One is that coaching institute, they will be in the field for a long time. They know the exam pattern very well. They know the relevant, what is the relevant for the exam, right? They will tell you what to study, what not to study. It is not about reading books after books. No, you are preparing for an exam. The ultimate aim is score the marks. In order to score good marks, what has to be studied? What content has to be studied? What content? need not do study. Those clear type ideas will be given by the coaching institute only. Because of Mohanali, ma'am. Sonan, sir. Ma'am, please make a call to the guest, ma'am. Okay. Yes. Yeah, he came, ma'am. Sir, please unmute and speak, sir. Sandra Kumar, sir, please unmute and speak.
this is where i left so i was talking about role of coaching institutes so yeah coaching institutes plays a vital role in your preparation they will give what the proper guidance see there is a difference between guidance and proper guidance so for this exam what has to be done what has not to be done will be given by the coaching institute see in your college itself if you are giving coaching please you can join and uh, you can get started your preparation right so coaching institute uh, see uh, uh, for this exam you have to study uh, uh, almost a year you have to dedicatedly study for this exam you cannot study but see like your semester exam tomorrow semester exam means today night you cannot prepare and write this exam no it is not possible yet so that is not possible here in this case you have to put lot of effort you have to study almost one year to write this you have to equip yourself with all the knowledge to write this exam right so in your college if they are uh, starting some program related to the exam means you all please kindly join right after uh, completing college also you can uh, uh, join uh, the preparation centers coaching centers see here you will be surprised to know uh, in one of the coaching institute uh, when the uh, student of st uh, studying sixth standard came to attend the what coaching and the school standard student studying school standard uh, came to attend the uh, in uh, I mean, co coaching centers the class of coaching centers like that students nowadays uh, know very knowledgeable they start their preparation in the school days itself that is what i am trying to say but now we are in now college now we have, we have what ample amount of time that too we are in lockdown instead of wasting our time we can uh, allot our time for constructive active work right so we can just start your preparation this will be the right time for you to start the preparation and uh, i said uh, right uh, there are various services in the initially i said there are various services these are the services the uh, services here uh, i can put it in the three categories all india services uh, uh, group a uh, services group b services not i am putting it has been given in the uh, website itself as, like this only all india services indian administrative service forest service police service right and the forest service exam alone preliminary exam uh, we are going to write along with the uh, exam of this ias ips after that the mains exam is different for uh, this ias and ips exam and uh, this one uh, forest only that mains exam is going to be different but the preliminary exam is same this three services only considered consider to be all india services because uh, you will be posted anywhere in india that is the meaning okay just a simple meaning the group a services there are various services you see here indian foreign services there indian defense account services there indian postal services there uh, civil account services there uh, indian railway traffic service there are various services sir what uh, then i will tell you then group b services also right uh, pandicherry civil service uh, uh, pandicherry police service right other uh, unit territory services so what is the difference between these two services um, uh, See here, if you get the top rankings, right, uh, almost uh, uh, one to one twenty five ranks, if you get, right. See, once you complete the interview, results are going to be announced based on your ranking, right. I have already told you, they are going to choose the recommend for each year is close to thousand only. They are going to choose only thousand people. Among the thousand people. not everybody going to get the ias ips service no only the first top rankings almost uh, under 250 along with that there are some uh, what to say that uh, some relaxations are there uh, uh, first uh, one to 150 ranks if you score 
you are you will be what getting the service what you want like in the administrative service police service people few people are interested might be interested in uh, for in services or is like that whatever you ask they will give for other uh, rankings what they give we have to take it so these are the service they give. so based on your ranking only you are going to get the service so if you want to get the good service you have to get the good work right and these are the various services and once you clear the interview you will go for what the training in labasna lal bhagatul shastri national academy of administration which is in sori uttarakhand okay for the aspirant who is preparing for this exam the first dream is to go for the training in labasna so i also request all of you to dream to go for labasna right so this is uh, for all the service initially a uh, few basic service they will give afterwards what uh, based on your different service you will be sent to different training centers it is just a training center for administrative services so this is how the life at the labasna you will be uh, given all sort of training uh, which are uh, the demands of you will be trained based on the demands of the society current society so you get the training there once you get the training you will be posted in your your uh, cadre right so uh, straight away you will not going to become a district collector or secretary no you will just start your uh, career by uh, assistant collector or uh, sub collector like that then you first of you uh basic ranking then based on your experience you will be promoted to the next level of ranking then you will go to the branch uh, secretary additional secretary then secretary then post uh, collector then collector then various department secretaries right once you posted you will have specific <clears throat> roles and responsibility in your department along with that for ias officers alone i am given here general responsibilities what are the responsibilities we have to manage the government affairs and infrastructure implement and supervise the implementation process of government policies like that where are various general responsibilities are there so you are going to look after those responsibilities so basically you are going to be very responsible and accountable person and uh, uh, initially i have uh, given one story about uh, a person a manipulator is who studied in the tamil medium right now right now he is in uh, uh, up he is a sub collector of sonapatra see here this is what you can uh, make when you become the uh, civil servants see in, in his uh, uh, district he identified that uh, uh, there is low attendance in the school right so he realized right uh, if school children not coming to school means what it will lead to child labor and to lack of education so he did immediate intervention and uh, he, he, he initiated a program to increase the attendance percentage in the schools earlier it was 50 percentage now the attendance percentage increased to 80 percentage right this is what you can make this is the impact you can make this is what everybody has paid for so you are going to help the needy and you are going to help directly the people okay this is what you can do you can do many wonders in the service right so like this you can initiate many things right so that much uh, power i like cannot say power but any anyway, to some extent that much power that much responsibility that much role you have in shaping the society so civil service system is the backbone of the administrative machinery of our country see politicians will rule for five years in the backdrop always what the administrative officials are going to be there right political parties i change politi uh, the government may change but uh, the administrative system is going to remain as it is once you get the service you will be there till your retirement 
right so once you get the service you have to keep this one in mind on this talisman what it says recall the face of the forest and the weakest man whom you may have seen and ask yourself if step you contemplate is going to be of any use to you will he gain anything by it will it restore him to a control over his own life and destiny in other words will it lead to swaraj for angry and spiritually starving millions then you will find your doubts and your self melting away what it says so whatever you are doing right uh, when you do something if you have a doubt whether i'm doing uh, whatever i'm doing is right or wrong right in order to answer this question think of a, a man right uh, uh, a poor man right uh, if, if your initiative is going to help that man in any of the way then you can definitely do that work that is what it says so so always this one we have to keep and for further information exam about uh, UPSC exam you can refer this website this is what uh, the official website in this website only the notifications are going to come and uh, just a quick uh, information about other competitive exams available whatever i have till now talked about only the civil service exam that is all india uh, central exam now same way uh, in every state there is state public service commission uh, in tamil nadu we have tamil nadu public service commission it conducts exam for group 1 group 2 group 4 and all right for group 1 exam it is for what deputy collector dsp assistant commissioner for those posts we are collect, conducting again the eligibility is what any uh, graduates in any discipline again this is also going to be a three stage exam right but for further details you can just look into this website the next we have bank exam right again if any degree is enough it is conducted by institute of banking personal selection and the sba see for a public sector bank this is the uh, conducting agency again we are also what till very many interview see for other kind of uh, uh, competitive exams you have to focus on two things one is uh, uh, english and mathematics i mean basic mathematics uh, just i have prepared this for how important uh, these two areas especially max basic max you have to be little bit uh, careful and you should have basic knowledge in that right so for other exam we will give much preference to these topics english and mathematics so further information you can visit this website and another competitive exam is the railway exam uh, conducting bodies what railway recruitment board again any discipline is uh, i mean graduates in any discipline you can apply for this there are three stage again tier 1 to tier 2 just a different name tier 1 tier 2 uh, then interview in the tier 1 uh, this is the syllabus and uh, the marks and all are given here right so people who are interested in this kind of exam also you can prepare and write every uh, uh, every uh, discipline for every uh, institute is conducting its own exam whatever uh, is your interest based on your interest you can appear for those exam and you can get that so for further information about railway exam and its related uh, information you can visit the website what i have given here and then ssc staff selection commission it is conducting exam for uh, uh, staffs to various posts in the ministries departmental and organizations of government of india it is four stage exam tier 1 tier 2 tier 3 tier 4 here the tier 4 they just tier 1 tier 2 that uh, year are given english and uh, some general knowledge and uh, max uh, tier 1 tier 2 but the tier 3 it is uh, uh, related to your uh, essay writing and all and tier 4 your technical skill they will uh, test your technical skill, computer and typewriting and all and for further exam you just to visit this website for staff selection commission Uh, intelligence iv again uh, three stage exam right any uh, uh, degree is enough right in tier 1 only we have the english general knowledge and max uh, part tier 2 again yes sir it in tier 3 i mean uh, last stage interview and for further information you can visit this website right these are various competitive exams wherever you are interested whatever uh, uh, your interest uh, sorry 
wherever you are having interest whatever you want to become based on your interest you choose the area and prepare for that exam and get that service i think this is what your motto of your college stick strike and succeed right uh, i interpret this one in my own style so first <clears throat> fix where you want to go right what do you want to be right seek that first once you seek that only once you fix your goal then only you will start moving towards it then only you will put hard work you will strive towards it once you put heart and soul if you do hard and smart work you will get succeed okay it is not only your success success will be success will be celebrated by others and you will lay the path for the success of others also you will be the role model for the success of others also and also you will be play a great part in the improvement of the society so stick strive succeed so always don't ask that can i do it always say to your self that i can do it always be positive thank you if you have any questions you can ask thank you sir for the wonderful session it is very detailed and valuable one the various practical examples model questions and exam patterns in the current trend it didn't it is useful for us to take up the exams we got several ideas and tips about how to take up the civil service exam and competitive exam in the upcoming days we really motivate our students to start competing in the future we have few questions regarding the civil services and competitive examination i invite mrs s satya ma'am assistant professor department of mathematics to come up with the questions to our chief guest for the question and answer session thank you sir the session was very interesting and informative sir thank you we have some questions from the viewers shall i ask the question sir yes yes sir yes. which degree is best for civil service exam um see <clears throat> when it comes to degree there is no best degree for civil service exam see based on a syllabus alone we can say suppose if you choose st it is going to be helpful it is going to be helpful for the preparation geography because these are there in the syllabus right and even if you study physics chemistry also it, you can write the exam it is not about the degree what you study it is about you how you perceive the exam right so any degree you can study. that is what my answer to the question any degree you can have any degree you can study degree is different from this examination right if you choose a degree for example st geography right those degrees are going to be helpful in what uh, writing the exam because those topics are there in the syllabus straight away it is going to be helpful so any degree is fine there is no particular important degree thank you sir which civil service has highest salary service yeah every service is unique in its own way highest salary is when it comes to highest salary means of course top uh, service is rps see salary is not big part here three things you will get by getting this by getting through this exam if you get i uh, know uh, uh, a service you will serve the people who are in need and you will uh, get some social recognition afterwards only your salary comes okay uh, salary okay salary uh, i'll tell you uh, the basic salary is starting from uh, 56000 i guess based on your experience the salary will increase difference uh, yeah there is small change in the salary scale but not too much thank you sir how to make an effective study plan for competitive exam yeah effective study plan uh, the, uh, the presentation stuff i told you uh, that see when you are uh, coming to this kind of competitive exam you have to first allocate one year dedicatedly for this and especially in the is ips preparation and all uh, uh, you have to give almost 10 hours per day 
you have to prepare almost 10 hours per day right uh, 10 it, it depends on the individual see uh, there are uh, brilliant students average students below average students again depends on the individual few people if they study a concept they will understand uh, in the first time itself few people uh, need to study the same concept twice and thrice so it depends on the individual first of all and for this kind of competitive exam see uh, if you are studying in the college if you are studying we cannot afford too much 10 hours it is not possible you can definitely allocate five hours per day if you are studying yes after studying you are coming to the preparation regularly means you have to give minimum 10 hours per day thank you sir how can i start preparing for ies at home yeah home preparation this also i have answered see here initially for basic understanding you can i have already told you you can start your preparation in the home itself by reading the ncrt books that is what you can do right you can get the basic idea afterwards uh, definitely there is a great part for coaching institutions right so home itself we can there are many candidates who have, who have prepared home itself but uh, their background is something different right so it is not suitable for all right you can start the preparing preparation with the ncrt that is one stage uh, one part after that you have to definitely go to some coaching institution or in your college definitely that is going to be helpful so because if you study in your home itself means it will take our uh, years to complete it. okay if you get the proper guidance the time will be reduced that is what my suggestion regarding home preparation yes we can start the basic things from the home afterwards we have to get the good guidance from the meeting students thank you sir last question which website is best for preparing civil service exam yes yes ma'am uh, see the material is plenty here I have already told you, you know, what to study, what not to study is important. You can study, again, you are not going to become a scientist by writing this exam. You are not going to do PhD. They are not going to award any degree for you. Right? So there are plenty of material. There are plenty of uh, resources, plenty of uh, websites. Each website gives its own material, not all material. They will give current affairs freely. For current affairs, if you want, I can say to website for current affairs, we have Vision IAS uh, and Insight on India website. For these things, you can uh, refer for the current affairs and also few uh, anchoring factors you can refer this, right? These are few basic. See, every institute is uh, giving quality material, quality content only. But you cannot, uh, you know, have all institution material and prepare the exam no it is a wrong strategy fix one institute or two institute get the material and prepare. that is what my advice so in question for current affairs for question uh, answer rating you can go for insight on india thank you for your valuable information sir once again thank you sir thank you once again thank you sir and thank you ma'am Kindness is the language which deaf can hear and the blind can see. It's time for us to convey the word of thanks. So now I request Mr. Lakshman, third BEC Mathematics, to deliver the word of thanks. Word of thanks. Gratitude is not only the greatest of virtues, but the parent of all the others. It's my privilege to have been asked to purpose word of thanks on this occasion. On behalf of the Department of Mathematics, I extend my sincere gratitude to our Chairman, Civilian Dr. N. R. Dhanapalan, sir, our Secretary, Mr. N. R. D. Prem Kumar, sir, our Joint Secretary, Dr. P. E. R. Prem Chan, sir, our Principal, Dr. Kamala Balakrishnan, ma'am, and our Vice Principal, Mrs. Jafia Solomon, for their perfect logistic support and guidance, and especially for granting us the opportunity to conduct this webinar orientation on civil services on competitive exams. 
I extend my heartfelt thanks to the resource person for his detailed elaboration on how to prepare for civil services and other competitive exam. He enlightened on the important topics, techniques, and time management to crack exams easily. Thank you, sir. You talk eliminated fear on the students and imbibed confidence to crack exams easily. Well, my dear friends, a successful webinar like this cannot happen overnight. The wheels started rolling weeks ago. I must mention my deep sense of appreciation to Mrs. D. Moganavalli, head of the Department of Mathematics, Mr. K. Ponas, and Mrs. S. Satya for organizing this webinar and making it a grand success. I also extend my heartfelt thanks to technique team, Mr. Vin Dr. Vinod, Mr. Yuvanesh Kumar, and Mr. Loganadan for their endless support to organize this webinar virtually. Last but not the least, I express my deepest gratitude to all the participants from various colleges for their active participation in the webinar. Once again, I thank everyone for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you, Lakshman. You were born to win, but to be a winner, you must plan to win, prepare to win, and expect to win. With all this, we end this session here. I request the participant to fill the feedback form using the below link. I hope this is an useful session. Once again, thank you. Greetings 